So let's take a closer look at the baseball player salary data that we've downloaded and imported into R. So you can do that with view salaries. So notice that the players aren't represented by their actual name. They're represented by some kind of ID. So this ID looks pretty unhelpful. Why can't you just put their actual names in the columns? The most important reason is there are multiple players in history that have the same name. So at that point, if you use their names to identify them, it wouldn't be possible to tell them apart in the data. Meanwhile, these, these IDs are guaranteed to be unique per player. So there are other advantages. For instance, the player ID is shorter and therefore takes up less storage space. But this uniqueness is the most important. It means that this ID can be used to connect this column to other data sets. So what do I mean by other data sets? Well, the salary data is just one table within the Laman baseball data set. Let's load in a different one, from a slightly different URL. So we'll go to back this line where we read it in from a URL. Let's instead read in a file called master.csv. So just change this to master. Master. Now before we do anything else, let's turn this data frame into a data table, just like we did to salaries. Master equals as.data.table of master. So now the data in here is as a data table. So this is a master list. You can view it here, view of master. This is a master list of all the players based on ID. Here in this first column, you can see those IDs that appeared in the salaries. You can also see a lot of biographical information. For instance, their birthday, birth birthplace, the date of their death, and perhaps most importantly, their name. So, uh, so now in, in, the, in one table, we just have the ID, and then uh, based on the, the year, some extra information. And in this table, we have a way of getting from that ID to their actual biographical information. So let's take the first name on this list. So that, that's here, this, this person's name being David Ardsma. Let's take the first name on the list. We could take the salaries data set and extract just this player's salary. We do that by doing player ID equals Ardsma. So based on their ID, we were able to extract out the years of their salary. We could even make some extrapolations based on the trend. We can see that they played in seven years. We can see it rose from 2004 to 2010 before dropping back down again. And this is, so this is a way we can get this player's name, David Ardsma, and, uh, and also get his, uh, his salary information. But it's very clumsy if we had to do this for every player. Luckily, there's a much easier way to connect these two data sets. We can merge them, which uses the merge function. So let's create a new merge data set called merge.salaries. He was going to say merge of the salaries data set and the master data set. And now we tell them what ID we're going to use to merge them. In this case, that's the ID that's shared between them. Player ID, as you can see, in both data sets. So we say by player ID, merge. So now let's look at what's in this merge data set. So notice we can still see that we can still see all the salary information, their player, their year, their team league, and their salary. But we also have it combined with biographical information, their birthday, their birthplace, and their name. So we've combined those two tables based on this common column. We have them all in one place. If you want to look for trends in salary, for instance, a connection to sal of salary to a player's height, weight, or birth country, you now have all the information in one data table. So one note is that having their first and last names as different columns is useful, but we'd like to combine them together in a new column of first space last name. So one way we can create a new column in data tables is with yeah, uh, we create a column called name. It's name colon equals. So this means assign a new column name, and now we can do anything with other columns in the data set. So the paste function is a useful function in R for combining two vectors of strings so that, uh, separated by spaces. So we, if we put name first, you can see and name 
last, it'll know because we're in here that we want to combine these two names into a full name. So now if you check merge.salaries, you'll see it's added a column name. See here. Merging can sometimes be a bit more complicated. For example, let's bring in one more data set. This one, a history of each player's batting statistics for each year. So we're going to find that by taking the same URL, but changing master to batting and saving it into the batting data frame. Then let's take it and turn it into a data table, just like we did the other ones. And then let's take a look at it. So this is our most complicated data set yet. Much like the salaries data set, we have one row per player per year, along with information like their team ID and their league ID. We also have many statistics showing how well they did at batting that year. For example, the G represents how many games this player played in. AB represents how many times they had at bat, how many chances they had to get a hit. H shows the number of successful hits they have. And HR shows the number of home runs they scored. That's hitting the ball out of the park and getting a run in just one hit. So let's say we want to combine this data with the salary data. For example, so we can see how salary is correlated with performance. Well, first, notice that the salary table and the batting table don't share just one column of player ID, like they did with the master. Instead, rather, they share two, uh, four columns, player ID, year ID, team ID, and league ID. Here, and we can see similarly in salaries, year ID, team ID, league ID, player ID. These four columns are shared. You'll have to join on all four of them. So the way you do that is with the merge, or the by argument, to merge. So we want to create merged batting. We do merge of batting and salaries and say by equals instead of just player ID like we did with the salaries, the mass list, we're going to use all four of those IDs player ID, team ID, league ID, and year ID. Put it two lines. So now take a look at our merged batting. See, now it has all the same information that was in batting, but it's also added a column of salary. Another thing to note is that we don't have salary information on every player in every year. In particular, we've lost all information on players before 1985. So there's a way we could fix this by adding the all.x option to merge. So here in our script, when we do merged batting, we can add all.x equals true. What this means is keep all the values in x that, as opposed to y. That's the first of the two data sets we're merging. So when we run this and we view merged Or if we just take a look at it in the interactive window, merge batting, what we see is we, we have the same information, but now not every row has a salary value. Some of them are NA. NA in R means missing value, or not applicable. So now you can see uh, all the rows for which we do have salary get their value, and all the ones that don't get filled in with a missing value, NA. So now we can take this merged data set and merge it with our biographical data in the master list. So here that would be merged all equals merge of merge dot batting and master. Now there's only one column that this table shares with master, and that's player ID. So we run this. Now we see we still have the same batting information, but we also have the biographical information shared with it. For example, 
each player's real name. So we've created one mega data set covering all three of these kinds of information. But the Lahman baseball data set contains a lot more information. Players' fielding statistics, presence in the Hall of Fame, pitchers, managers, and so on. And all of them share these same IDs. So by merging these data sets in the right way, you can answer very complex and interesting questions.